Hey everyone, I'm Coach Moose, and I'm coming to you today with this week's edition of the top three stories in the world of CrossFit. And we just finished the CrossFit Open on Monday, March 6th, and today is Friday, March 10th. We are one week away from the launch of the next stage of the, uh, the qualifying for the 2023 Noble CrossFit Games. That next stage being the quarterfinals. As of yet, I have not seen anything from CrossFit HQ itself officially certifying the final standings in on the worldwide leaderboard after the CrossFit Open. But I do know that there are individuals receiving their invites for the quarterfinals. So we can assume that as far as CrossFit HQ is concerned, the leaderboard is official as of today. And so without further ado, let's get right into the top three stories in the world of CrossFit for the week of March 6th. And I'm going to lead off with your final standings from the CrossFit Open based on the worldwide leaderboard. Your top five individual elite female finishers are in order, Mal O'Brien, Paige Powers, Emma Lawson, Ariel Lowen, and Alex Gazan. Your top five male individual elite finishers are in order of placement, Jeffrey Adler, Tola Morikino, Colton Mertens, Tyler Christopel, and Roldan Gold Goldbaum. And your top five teams in order of placement, CrossFit East Nashville, CrossFit Mayhem Independence, CrossFit Invictus, CrossFit Zerance. Uh, don't know what that affiliate or team name is. And then CrossFit Torian Mayhem. So let's go back and look at the top five females. Mal O'Brien's lowest finish was 107th in 23.2B, which was, if you remember, the one rep, mat, one rep max thruster. And her highest finish was first in 23.2A, which was the ladder chipper of uh, burpee pull-ups and shuttle runs. So not too shabby, right? Uh, Paige Powers is continuing her uh, climb in the field of individual uh, elite females. Uh, she followed up her win at Wadapalooza with a second place finish on the worldwide leaderboard in the Open. Uh, Ariel Lowen, uh, the fittest mom in CrossFit right now, and also the fittest garage gym athlete. Uh, so she has claim to both of those titles. And then Alex Kazan, who is probably next to Carrie Pierce, the marquee athlete in the stable of games competitors coming out of underdog athletics, which uh, whose head coach is Justin Kotler. You may recognize underdog athletics as the training camp that once featured the, the trio of Carrie Pierce, Danielle Brandon, and Bethany Shadburn. And Bethany Shadburn and er Danielle Brandon have since moved on. Alex Gazan is still at Underdog Athletics. And coincidentally, Alex, Ariel, and Carrie competed as a team at Wadapalooza. And then one other significant fact, your top three finishers on the female side range in the ages of 18 to 20. So that's pretty significant. Looking at your top five male athletes, uh, Tola Morikino is now on a team with CrossFit East Nashville Proven. Colton Mertens is usually an unaffiliated unaffiliated. Uh, athlete. He usually does most of his training at home outside of his uh, shed or garage, uh, but he did do all of these workouts at an affiliate. And then Tyler Christopher representing CrossFit Mayhem. Uh, so he did uh, pretty well for himself. And this is 
this Roldan Goldbaum. I don't know much about him, but he is from Mexico and he is your fifth uh, finish, fifth top finisher on the worldwide leaderboard. And then looking at the top five teams, looking at CrossFit East Nashville, that's the Proven Camp headed by Shane Orr and where Tia Claire Toomey, Brooke Wells, Sydney Wells, Will Morad and Saxon Panchik, to name a few, uh, are training out of. And then CrossFit Mayhem Independence. Uh, it was interesting, depending on what workout you looked at, uh, CrossFit Mayhem Independence featured uh, a variety of combination of athletes uh, for each of the three workouts. And then uh, CrossFit Invictus, uh, I'm not familiar with this uh, CrossFit Zerantz, uh, what what their camp or history is. So don't know much about them, so I can't really speak to them. But CrossFit Torian Mayhem is a Mayhem affiliate out in Australia, and the team captain there is none other than Royce Dunn. So that's your top story, the CrossFit Open leaderboard, as we head into quarterfinals. And then looking at the uh, second story, Mayhem continues to assert its dominance across all competitor uh, categories. So just to give you a rundown, they featured 16 men in, out of the top 100 spots uh, on the leaderboard, also six women uh, featured in the top 100 spots on the leaderboard, 28 athletes in the top 20 age group divisions or across all age groups, uh, age group divisions, and then four teams in the top 50, and then five athletes in the making up the uh, part of the top 10 adaptive athletes. So Mayhem continuing to assert its dominance as the premier uh, training camp or super camp in the CrossFit space. So it'll be interesting to see how uh, that turns out. I'm gonna post a graphic to go along with this particular story to show the breadth and depth of just how remarkable mayhem's, mayhem's uh, dominance is in the sport across all uh, athlete categories uh, as we head into the games or the heart of the game season. And then last but not least, quarterfinals, March 16th, the workouts are released and March 19th is the final workout submissions are due. So looking forward to how all these athletes do across uh, the second stage of uh, qualification for the 2023 CrossFit Games. Some of my favorite athletes are advancing on to the next stage. So I'm looking forward to seeing how they do in particular. I have a friend that I used to coach and uh, I sometimes still write programming for. Uh, he is out of Weasel Warrior CrossFit at Shaw Air Force Base in Sumter, South Carolina. And he should be receiving his invite to quarterfinals and looking to uh, advance out of the quarterfinal stage, hopefully onto the next stage. So looking forward to how everyone does across all three stages. And with that, that is your top three for the week of March 6, 2023. See you at the whiteboard.